Today I'm going to show you five editing tricks to make better videos, uh, such as zooming in on your face if you're doing like these YouTube videos, or uh, zooming out. Whoa, that's a, that's a little bit too far. Let's see if we can get it back here. There we go. And I'm also going to... Huh? I'm, re I'm recording oh, a video. Thank you. Bye. I'm also going to show you how to do that and uh, a couple of other things as well. Editing videos is by far the step that I enjoy the most when I'm creating my videos. I really love the whole process of like sitting down, piecing together di different clips that you've shot during the day and then creating that whole sequence or video that you have in your head and then spend a lot of time with the sound design and color grading and stuff like that. And that is also why I think editing is so important to practice when you're starting out to create videos because that is where you will put your own style to your videos. And in this video I'm going to show you five different tips to help make your videos better because these are a couple of things that I wish I'd known when I was starting out editing my videos. The first tip is going to be how to zoom in to your video clip, just like this, because it's actually like super simple, but it also gives the viewer a feeling of a different camera angle. It's a really simple way of making your videos more interesting. So to do this, the only thing that you gotta do is to mark the clip and then set the playhead at the place we want the zoom in to start. So I'm gonna choose right here, and then we wanna go up here to the right, and we are going to choose scale, and we're gonna set a keyframe, as you can see right here. So we're gonna hit that, and then you can see it turns yellow. And the reason for that is because now the keyframe is active. Now we're gonna move forward six frames, and then we're gonna go ahead and set another keyframe. And now we wanna increase the scale to 150, all right? So when we play that back, it zooms in on our subject. And the cool thing is that if you're making a YouTube video, then you can just basically cut the clip where you wanna cut it, so you're gonna hit B, and then you can choose that clip, and then you can increase the scale to say 150. And when you play that back, it's basically a hard cut that just zooms in on my face because we didn't do any keyframing, we just split the clip in two, and then on the second clip, we increase the scale. And this technique is something that I personally use a lot in my videos here on YouTube because then it feels like there's way more camera angles than it actually is. So I highly recommend you to use this if you're making any kind of interview videos or YouTube videos because it like it helps the pace of the whole video to be a lot smooth. Huh? Smooth, 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 criminal. Tip number two is probably the most easy tip that you'll ever gonna get from me, at least, because this, this is basically just playing things in reverse. Say, for example, that I wanna use this clip, and instead of having the camera like going away from the tools, I wanna have the camera move in towards the tools. So the only thing that you gotta do then is basically select the clip, and then you're gonna go up here to this icon, and then you're gonna press that, and then you're gonna choose reverse clip. And when you play that back, voila. This, of course, doesn't work for all the different clips because when you have someone walking, they're gonna be walking in like moonwalk, but it does work, especially if you're doing some establishing shots or anything like that. This is also something that I use a lot in my videos when I'm planning those like whip pan transitions because then I can go from going down into panning up and then when I reverse that, it's gonna be the same kind of effect so that I can piece those two clips together. And the cool thing is that this doesn't just apply for video because you can do some cool things with audio as well. And if you've been watching a lot of my videos, then you probably recognize that sound. But if I were to play that back the way that it's originally meant to be played, then it's gonna be like a big hit with a lot of reverb. But again, when you play that back, it gives you a whole different effect. So it's really cool to play around with, and I highly recommend you to do it. Tip number two, done. The third thing that I wanna show you is going to be masking to have yourself looking at you. And this is actually not as hard as you might think it is. But a couple of things that you need to think about to make this work is one, that you need to have a constant light source. Like the lighting cannot change in the scene because that is gonna ruin the whole 
illusion, if you may. Another thing is also to shoot in manual focus when you're planning to do a scene like this, because then you don't have to worry about the camera like hunting, trying to find the focus if you're not in frame or if you're like in the edge of the frame. And what you do then is basically that you just record yourself uh, sitting, talking, whatever you want to do. And when you're done with that, you just move to a different place within the frame and then do the same thing like until you have enough footage that you want to have. And when you're done with that, it is super simple to do the editing. So what you want to do is that you want to have both clips on the timeline and then you want to drag one of the clips on top of the other. And this basically works like two layers. As you can see right now, only the top layer is visible because we can't see the bottom layer since the top layer is covering the whole screen. But if we had a mask to this, then we can choose what parts of that layer that's gonna be visible together with the second layer. So what you want to do is add a draw mask and then drag it onto the clip. And then we're gonna see where my head is and then we're gonna set points like so all the way around. And voila, <laughs> I'm leaning in too far from where we set the points. So we're just gonna like adjust the points and then scrub through the footage really simple and see if, yeah, I'm still standing there. Looks good. We're just gonna add some feathering to this. So we're gonna drag this down in this case. We're gonna drag it down to like 200 and then we're gonna play this back. This looks really good. Here you go. That's actually pretty simple. And uh, now you can just make as many copies of yourself as you possibly can. <laughs> the fourth thing that I want to show you is a before and after just like this. And that is usually something that I use when I want to show off the results and how the color grading looks when you use one of my LUTs. And if you're interested in one of those, then you can just go into the description below and there's gonna be a link right there saying like, my LUTs. The first thing we wanna do is just duplicate the clip. So we're gonna mark the clip, hold down Alt, and then drag upwards to do a duplicate of this. And since I've done some color grading with my YouTuber LUT onto this clip, I'm gonna choose the clip below and I'm gonna remove the check from cinema grade because if we hide the top layer, then you can see the difference that the LUT does to our footage. Now I want to show off the sliding motion onto this clip, sliding from the top clip to the bottom clip and then back to the top clip. And to do this, we are gonna set a keyframe. So we're gonna go up here to the transform tool and then we're gonna go to the right side and we're gonna choose right and we will add a keyframe right here and then we're going to jump forward like three seconds maybe and then we're going to drag this all the way to the edge 38 60 or something like that and playing that back you can see that it like smoothly removes the color grading and now we want to make it come back in again from the right side because it fades out towards the left and now we want to make it come back in from the right side and to do this, we are going to set a keyframe here for the left. And then we're going to just jump one frame forward and we're going to set a keyframe for the right again. And this time we're going to drag the right all the way down to zero. And then we're going to drag the left all the way up to maximum. And now we're going to jump forward three seconds maybe. And then back, set another keyframe and then drag the left all the way down. So playing this back, it basically looks like this. That is kind of cool, right? Super simple, but really effectful. And like, it does make a huge difference to showing off those before and after images when you're doing some color grading or editing your photos or anything like that. And you want to have some animation to it, right? The last thing that I want to show you is, uh, in my opinion, one of the coolest things, and that is to get the muffled sound on your audio or music or whatever it is that you have. So it sounds like this. That is usually something that I use a lot when I'm shooting my sequences to get that slow-mo intense feeling that that short second is really slowed down. And it's actually really simple to do with a couple of keyframes. So the first thing you want to do is to go to the effects panel that is right here. And then you want to type in fat EQ. And then you want to mark this and drag it onto your music. 
And then you want to go up to the effects panel and then you want to choose parameters and we're going to click that so it expands. And then you want to go all the way down to band 5 and then we're going to change the mode from shelf to cut. And then we're going to set a keyframe right here and then we're going to move forward a couple of frames like so. And then we're going to drag it down to 250 and then we're going to jump forward a couple of frames and then we're going to set another keyframe and then move forward a couple of frames again and go back up to 10,000. And now we have that part muffled out so it sounds like this. That is kind of cool, right? Super simple to do, really effectful. All right, I really hope that you enjoyed those tips because those are a couple of tips that I personally think is really cool to know and it's gonna give your videos like that extra edge that you wanna have when you're creating videos for YouTube or your clients. And if you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up because it does make a huge difference. So thanks so much for that. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button because uh, it's also appreciated. Well, thanks so much for watching and uh, until next time. Ah, look at that. I bought a size too small. So like I get this uh, this. Oh, I hold on.